Welcome to our lesson about adding and setting up audio tracks in preparation for recording. Once you've created your project, you're not quite ready to press the record button. That's because your project remains empty. You need some place to put your recording, and that place is called a track. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create audio tracks in our Cubase project and how to prepare them for recording. To add an audio track, click Project on the main menu strip, select Add Track, and then select Audio. There are many types of tracks available to you in Cubase, and we'll be talking about some of these later on in this course. Each type of track has its own icon for easy identification. Here's the Add Audio Track dialog window. Let's specify a number. Just hit the arrows to increase or decrease, or type a value in the Count field. Let's add two tracks. Now we need to select a track configuration. Many solo instruments are generally recorded in mono format. A mono track records input from one signal, whereas stereo tracks record input from two signals. There are many types of multi-channel configurations in addition to the basic mono or stereo track types. But for now, we're going to go ahead and click OK to add our new audio tracks to our project. And our new tracks appear in the project window. Notice the audio track icon to the left of the track and the column that indicates that these are indeed audio tracks. The first track is white, and that means that it's selected. To select a track, just left click on any blank area on the track. I'll just switch my selection back and forth between these tracks. This vertical strip under my tracks is called the track list. We can also add tracks with a right click in the track list area of the project window. On a Mac, you'd control click to access that contextual menu. Let's add another audio track from the contextual menu. The add audio track dialog window opens again. I want a stereo track now. Stereo tracks record in stereo interleaved format, which means that both signals from the left and right channels are recorded into the same file. You'll be seeing this term frequently when you make input and output selections in your digital audio workstation. Let's click OK. And our third new track appears under the track that I'd selected previously. It's an audio track in stereo format. By the way, I'm able to easily reorganize the order of the tracks by left-clicking and then dragging the track up or down while I'm holding down the mouse button. By default, audio tracks are labeled Audio 01, 02, 03, etc. by Cubase. Any music you record will have this track name as its prefix, so generally it's a good idea to give your tracks more descriptive names to make it easier for you to manage them at a glance later on. With a descriptive name, it's a lot easier to distinguish which files in the audio folder belong to which instrument. To rename your track, just double-click in the Track Name field, and then type a new name for the track. Let's rename my stereo track. I'll call it Piano. And press Enter to have Cubase accept your name. Let's rename Audio 1, a mono track. We'll call it Voice. Enter. To the left of the track list, we have what's called the Inspector Panel. We're able to rename tracks right from the Inspector Panel. Let's select my third track from the track list. Double click on the track name in the Inspector Panel, and let's type in Bass. Press Enter. Cubase accepts my modification. Now I've got three tracks. Piano is my stereo track, voice is a mono track, and the third track, my bass, is also a mono track, and it's currently the active selected track. By the way, if you don't see the inspector panel to the left of your tracks, click the Show Inspector button. The inspector is a convenient control area where we can see and manipulate a lot of information for the track that you've got selected. The Show Inspector button will toggle the inspector display on and off. Now let's assign the inputs and outputs for each of our tracks. In our previous lesson, we learned how to set up the inputs. I'd only set up one stereo and mono input and one stereo output. 
Cubase assigns my input presets automatically according to the configuration of the track. Whether it's mono, stereo, etc. Let's go ahead and double check each of my inputs and outputs. Let's start with the piano track, the stereo track. We'll click on it to select it. In the inspector, we see the input and output routing, stereo in and stereo out. Now let's take a look at the voice track. The stereo out is correct, but my mono input seems to have disappeared. We'd better go to the VST connections panel to see what happened. Let's just take a quick look at my third track as well. Same thing, we've got the stereo output correctly routed, but, but my mono input has disappeared. Cubase has routed the track to the left channel of the stereo in bus. Here's the VST connections panel. Here's my stereo in bus. However, my mono buses are gone. Let's add the mono bus again. We'll add two mono input buses. The audio device is correctly assigned. Let's choose the device ports. And for mono two, let's use the input one, which I've named Mike. Now let's rename the ports. We'll call this one microphone. And let's call mono two. Since I won't be recording more than one instrument at a time here, I will leave my second physical input port free. Prevents me from having to plug and unplug cables later. Now let's reassign the input bus on both of those mono tracks. We can click in this field to see a list of the available buses. Let's do the bass track now. Select the instrument bus. And the outputs look good. Let's check the piano track again to make sure it's okay. Stereo in and out are just fine. Generally, it's a good idea to set up your buses prior to recording because it simplifies the audio track setup process. But if you haven't, as you saw, it's still possible to do right now while you've got your tracks ready. Now that our inputs and outputs are set up, we're ready to set up a track for recording. In order to hear the audio coming into the track, while you're sound checking and recording, you need to enable the monitor. It's this yellow button here. It's yellow when it's enabled or on. If you don't turn the monitor on, you can't hear the input. Now maybe we want a metronome click to help keep time, at least for my first couple tracks. This floating tool palette here is called the transport panel. If you don't see it, you can select transport from the main menu strip and ensure that it's selected. The keyboard shortcut is F2. Let's right click on the transport panel and show the master and sync section. This is where the metronome and click areas are. And from this section, we can enable the metronome click. We just press click on the transport panel and it's white when it's active. Click here to get a two bar count in. This is called the pre count click button. It's white when it's active. Below here, we see the beats per minute and the time signature at 120, 4 over 4. Let's move the panel a bit to the left so you can read this call out. The tempo value you see here is for display only. We can't edit it because the tempo track is active. We're going to learn more about using tempo tracks later on. For now, let's click the tempo button to disable the tempo track. Now it's no longer white, and we are using what's called a fixed tempo. Let's double click on the beats per minute value and enter a new value, 80 beats per minute. Press enter and here's our new value. Now that we've set up our optional click and pre-count, it's time to check our levels. Let's expand the piano track a little bit. We just hover the mouse over the edge of the track until the cursor changes to a double-sided arrow, then drag down or up. Let's test the instrument. There's my signal. The signal looks pretty strong. We see it here on the transport panel as well. You need to make sure your instrument signal coming into Cubase is loud enough so that it won't need to be boosted too much later on from inside Cubase. Now if your signal is too loud, the signal will do what's called clipping. Usually your audio hardware will indicate this with a red light. Cubase gives you plenty of red light displays to help you notice this significant input problem on the transport panel, on the mixer, and we'll talk about the mixer later on. It's very important to adjust your source levels first to get the best quality possible. For more information on why this is and how to best set your levels for different instruments, please check out our video course on recording, mixing, and mastering. Generally, when you test your levels, you need to test at the maximum level that you expect to play during that song.
In the Inspector panel, let's click on the Channel tab to expand it. When you're testing your signal, make sure your signal doesn't go into the red on the channel meter. Did you hear that buzz? That's not good. We need to lower the gain on the audio interface, lower the volume on the instrument, or just play a little more quietly. If you go into the red, you may cause clipping or distortion, which is what we heard a moment ago. There's a line near the top of the channel meter. Make sure your level doesn't go above this line. Once you've set your levels, you are ready to record. The next thing to do is click the Record Enable button on the track. It's red when the track is enabled for recording. Setting the track to Record Enable status lets Cubase know that you want to record on this track and no other track. If this button is not red, you will not be able to record. You can record enable many tracks at a time, for example, if, if you're recording multiple inputs simultaneously, for example, your guitar with a scratch vocal track or a live band performance. Just shift select the tracks you want to record at the same time and ensure that each is record enabled. This button needs to be red for all tracks you want to record. Make sure the monitor's on if you want to monitor the input signal. Remember, if you've tried to record but nothing actually picks up, usually the problem is that the tracks weren't record enabled. This concludes our tutorial on creating and setting up an audio track. In our next lesson, we'll be recording.